Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time for a hot topic. And this is a statement that says Nigeria not ready for electric vehicles. And that's the auto gig CEO. Joining us to have a conversation is Frank Elianya. He's an economic analyst and senior writer with Tech Cabal. Good morning, Frank. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure to be here. Welcome. You're welcome. Okay, so we're talking about electric cars or electric vehicles, right? Um, yeah. There was a point where the president came and said, you know, they were going to bring about 100 buses, 100 yeah. electric buses, especially in the time of COP28, right? And we've not seen those buses yet. However, the CEO of Autogig is saying we're not even ready for that. What do you think about the statement? Let's start with that. Okay, so I think what he's saying uh, is um, looking at the industry from a holistic uh, um, view. Um, if, you, if you just isolate and say um, the electric vehicle, uh, as in can we do electric vehicle, can Nigeria do electric vehicle, really the answer will be not so we we're not so prepared for electric vehicle, uh, I mean, given the kind of uh, um, infrastructure that is needed to build um, that uh, space at the moment. Um, they're not readily available, although some companies like Oando and some others are beginning to build um, some sketchy infrastructure here and there. They're they are putting up uh, uh, um, charging centers, they are, they are putting up uh, some um, some repair uh, um, centers where you know you have a problem with electric vehicle, you can go there. You know, but those are, are, are like a drop in the water for what an electric vehicle industry actually requires. What the CEO of Auto Gig is referring to is that if you look at the automotive industry as a whole, we aren't doing very well in that in, in that space when we're not utilizing the opportunities that that space affords us nearly 90 as in say 90 percent of vehicles on our roads today are imported um whether they're imported new whether they're imported as to kumbo vehicles um accidented vehicles you know just um it's uh, um like a few uh, um like i think around 2022 it was uh, the then former president, the Emir Sibanjo, that said. That. Hello, Frank. Then former vice president. Yeah. Frank, we seem to have lost your audio. I don't know if you can hear us at this point. Uh, but electric vehicles. Uh, that's the way the future is going, mm -hmm. and I don't know what we're doing about it. Because if Frank comes back, I'm going to ask him if he's comfortable with the moves at all, at all by the authority to make sure that when that future arrives, we will not be found wanting. About two years ago, in the Full national demand, okay. we um, plan. Hello, Frank. Yes, I'm back. Go ahead, please. Should be looking at uh, um, electric vehicle space at the moment. I'm one of those that say that it's not just about, you know, let's go and import electric um, buses and all of that. Um, we need to have a, a stake on the table um, in the electric vehicle. Hello, Frank. Mm. Purchase of because to, to buy an electric vehicle is is not is not beans. I mean, it is it is very expensive and it's more expensive than you know your, your normal um, ICE vehicle. That's a, 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 a um, fossil fuel car. You know, so what we should be looking at is is a holistic approach how do uh, how do we deal with the issues that the automotive industry has currently in terms of policies um creating the right policies 
creating the enabling environment for those who are actually in the business, you know, to try. Uh, I, um, I think that's what he's talking about. It's not that if we want to import electric vehicles that we can't import them, we can import them. But if we import them with what electricity, I, are you going to run them? Um, if they develop, we have the personnel that has the expertise to um, to repair electric vehicles at the moment. I don't think the answer is very, very, um, it, or it's a big yes. It's not. We still need to, to train people to, to learn how to cop lack of capacity that we need to address before, um, uh, um, before we certify ourselves ready for this market. Okay. All right. So let's just talk about the um, the automobile yes. industry at, that we are currently in. And you know, you had highlighted the fact that ninety percent of the cars on our roads are imported. In fact, most of the vehicles that we see, not just cars, the um, keken apep. I don't think we create or we manufacture any of that in Nigeria. So most of all of these things are being imported. Um, do you think that we're not leveraging on, because there are some made in Nigeria um, cars, right? There are some companies who come, yes. maybe, maybe, they yeah. don't, maybe they don't have like 100% of the parts um, made in Nigeria. Maybe they import some of them and then they couple them here. But there are some that still, we know that we have the potentials for this. Do you think that, you know, the policies we have in Nigeria don't even allow us to leverage on the potentials that we have? So there are policies, for instance, whereby um, if you have to even import something, it's ridiculously expensive. Absolutely. I, I think, yes. Yes, go yes. ahead. Absolutely. I, I think that the policies that we have are very deficient um, in terms of addressing the issues that the industry has. Like, for instance, um, if you're... Uh, uh, um, let's look at it even to import, to import the vehicle. Um, you have to deal with issues around ship, um, shipping um, mm -hmm. those vehicles. Now, when you ship them and it gets to Nigeria, when you ship them and it gets to Nigeria, the next thing you're dealing with is customs clearance duty the customs clearance duty um over the past nine months have increased like um significantly and from from say 460 460 naira exchange to 1620 something naira um as of today you know now if you are if you're bringing in those parts into the country you know you know that you have to put in those costs into whatever it is that you are um going to eventually um do with them you know and eventually when you get it to the final consumers they will have to pay premium because you this cost um as that you eventually have to sell it so first of all can we address those issues from um from from a policy angle you know um then uh, um we then look at the value chain that's also what the auto, uh, the auto giga ceo was talking about looking at the value chain of the automotive um industry there are papers actually that are produced here in nigeria i mean i i when i say produce i mean 100 percent actually produce here small the little um so, so some very little um, papers that you can get here in Nigeria, and that's also why it's easy for some of these guys who are the, uh, um, coupling them here in this country to bring in some local elements into in, into those vehicles. That's what we need to encourage. We need to encourage more plants. We need to encourage more people with creative uh, um, abilities to set up um, such innovative centers for a car and decide. That, okay, we can be manufacturing maybe the door of the car, we can look at manufacturing the light, we can look at manufacturing. So, there are different things that you can do, but then it still goes down to what policies that you're creating. You have to have an enabling environment, and there has to be a, co um, a cohesion or um, a, 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 an integration or, or an understanding between the federal government and the state government and also the local government, you know, because 
even after the local, even after the federal government have collected their own taxes, the state government has a separate tax. The uh, the local government will come with their own separate um, taxes, um, and all of them forgetting the fact that if you overtax these businesses, the jobs will not be created, and uh, or of course the production that you need uh, um, to build uh, um, a healthy economy would not would not be done. You know, so there has to be some um, understanding, a handshake between all of these years of government uh, in, in terms of taxation. And there might be some need, you know, to, to declare some tax holidays, you know, in, in some certain aspects in the, in the production activities, just so that you galvanize, just so that you uh, um, encourage, encourage um, operators in the industry to continue to produce. We, if we can produce our vehicles, you know, say, um, say 70 percent, we can actually have a target. We can give ourselves a target and say, can we, between this period and, and, and the next period, um, uh, um, grow our local content in vehicles to 70 percent? Right now, maybe it's at 30 percent. Maybe it's at 20 percent. Look at what Innocent and uh, maybe not are doing. Pojo, you know, what are doing? What are they doing? You go there and say, how uh, uh, how many local content do you have in this vehicle? Then, if they say it's 40 percent, then you, you tell them, what can I do to help you get it to say 70 percent? You can't have you can't have a car that is entirely made in a particular country, even in the US is not done, you know, so they have to import some, some parts from China, they have to import from maybe from Germany, from the UK, the same with the UK, the same with uh, Germany, you know, so all these places, even in Japan, you know, so there are places where you have to get it because they have um, greater capacity to produce those parts that you need uh, and you, uh, you, you can then import them into your country and use it to couple your vehicles, you know, but to say that um, we uh, um, we import over uh, over eighty percent of our vehicles from outside isn't helping our economy. We need to help the local guys. We need to, and then aside from just helping them, there has to be an intentional patronage of these vehicles, uh, of these local vehicles. Yeah, the federal government over time has, uh, you know, um, played um, some significant role in patronizing um, um, companies like uh, Innocent and Nord, you know, but it, it needs to be more intentional. What, what would happen if the president's official vehicle is produced by Innocent or maybe not of uh, or by, or by Pijos, oh no, they would know? rather go for 160 million. <laughs> no, they they don't want that. Yeah, that's, that's the problem, you... Frank. Now, how do you think that this patronage will come when obviously they say they are looking for the name? Uh, because that's what one of the excuses they gave that oh, you know we have to go for a a brand that has a name. Mm. As if <laughs> Innocent is not a name. As if Nigeria is not a name. Also, my fear, my fear, Frank, is also that yeah. about two years ago, someone in the yeah. National Assembly, and I, I'm, I'm saying this because they did not uh, stand up to say shut up, uh, because they should have said that. Somebody in the National Assembly said, because we produce fuel, we should not even be talking about electric cars. So do you see a political will? Do you see a possibility that even the right legislation will be gotten to make sure that we are not found wanting when that time that we need all these electric cars come? I, I think that discussion is, uh, is a normal thing um, for so, uh, 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 in some um, political space, the way they talk about uh, things like that. It's the same way when you want to talk about um, having, say, renewable energies or, or solar power um, becoming ubiquitous across the country. Somebody will say, oh, what happened to those who are selling generators? You know, and, uh, you know, so all those kind of uh, discussions, you know, um, sometimes it boils down to maybe their level of uh, understanding, their level of education, you know. Um, when you talk about uh, um, fossil fuel cars and uh, electric vehicles, yeah, um, the discussion has always been about climate change or maybe uh, um, improving the environment. Um, but for me, I just feel like it is more about giving the consumers options, you know, viable options. Um, 
if electric vehicles works for you, if if it's cheaper, if it is a cheaper alternative, why not? The electric vehicles, the expense only comes when you buy the car. But over over the period of time, um, if the if all if all other conditions are stable, maintenance of electric vehicles are always cheaper than um, than ice. You know, so. Um, it, it, that's a given. So, it, I think we've lost his audio again. Mm. Yeah. So. Well, but he he said um, it's a normal thing for people to say uh, we don't want it, uh, especially um, or or to express fear that what happens to X Y Z, but. I don't see a reason why Nigeria should be worried. If we're going to solar, for instance, there are vehicles now that use solar. I, we've seen um, someone who's fabricating these vehicles in Bornu State, Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Why can't government or, or relevant authorities uh, make some laws, make some, some the situation so, so conducive for people who are as creative, as innovative as this? If you can convert your vehicle to solar-powered vehicle, at least we're, we're sure that it can run in the, in the daylight. And we have sufficient sun in this place. We don't need to buy it. Why can't we think about our people instead of thinking about what can come to the country? If we don't make money from oil today and the people are comfortable sure. with whatever they're doing or having, then we will not have a problem. Frank, sorry, I mean, we lost you. your audio yeah. at some point. Please go, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. So, uh, um, the, the whole, the entire idea yeah, is let's 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 think about the consumers first. Let's get them let's get them moving. And then, like I was, I was saying before, we have some capacities in the mineral resources that are used to produce electric vehicles. Take, for instance, lithium or okay, which is used for um, batteries. Right now, you have mining of lithium lithium going on in some states in the north, Nassau, for instance, and. And in some of those states, you have them um, becoming one of the issues or contentious issues that are making people lose their lives, you know. And that's because of the fact that there, there is no proper governance to the mining of these mineral resources. And because of also, they don't understand the potential of, of those mineral resources and how impactful it can help them develop their own states and also to uh, um, the larger country you know uh, there has to be some intentional um decisions that need to be made uh, about how we um govern our minerals how do we um use them to attract investors into the country we if if we govern them properly if we create the right policies it, um Companies from China, Tesla, all of them that are now at the forefront of the electric vehicle industry can decide, okay, we can have a plant here in Nigeria where we can be mining this, this mineral or we can even have that plant and also be producing some aspect of these um, batteries, which will even make it cheaper for us here in the market. You know, and with that, we're able to develop our own industry and run at the pace that the world is running so that we don't wake up in 2030 and then we start all of us that are now thinking oh yeah the world is now on and the electric vehicles let's all go and buy by electric vehicle that with is power issues around power um there's no point talking about electric vehicles kenya for instance is is africa's um like the largest um currently the largest um uh, um, user of electric vehicles right now, they have the largest is like 70% of what supplies electricity to the country. Mm. You know, so they're utilizing renewable energies, solar, wind, whatever that they, they can lay their hands on. Why can't we do that? We've got all the natural resources that we need 
we've got the abundance of sun, we've got abundance of wind, everything, you know. Why can't we just be intentional about growing the power sector? When we grow it, it's easy for investors to say, let us now come into this country and start building plans for electric vehicles to be manufactured here. Because we need to have a seat on the table. It's not just about importing it or importing the companies or the parts and all that. We need to start thinking about let's start manufacturing some of those parts of those electric vehicles. Even if we don't eventually start, you know what, let's have the parts come from Nigeria. If you've got the mineral resources, let's take advantage of it. That's what we're talking about. Hmm. That's how to grow the economy. So since you talked about growing the power sector, how do you, what are your recommendations? How do you think we can start to grow the power sector? Um, I'm sure some people would say that all we have to do is make sure that we prioritize it and look at the telcos, for instance. Um, the moment we had more players in the system, obviously there was more power, uh, more um, companies coming in, the prices drop. And if we do that with the, with the power sector as well, it might just benefit us as a nation. So if you're talking about growing the power sector, what would be your recommendations? It's to stop playing politics with it. The other day I saw that the president made an appointment uh, in the rural electrification, um, uh, um, that's R-O-E-A-E, -E. yes. And the chairman currently is uh, Ganduji. That for me is absolutely ridiculous. It's shocking. It's, it, it doesn't make sense. Who is the minister of, of power in the state's politicking? Then he does actually um, in, in the ministry. You can't play politics with critical sectors like that. You need to give it to people who know their job, who know what that um, sector is about. Number one, if you don't lay that foundation, every other thing you're doing is just is is just nonsense. It's, it's not going to work, you know. So. First of all, put the right people requires let them clean up your bread and heads in in that position they now get they'll bring you the vision they'll bring you the plans and you'll see them and, and you allow them the latitude to work that's for me as in that's number one because i have as, as in i'm still in shock that somebody like ganduje is is has something to do with aru as in rural electrification i don't know how that happened Okay, um, the network is a bit funny and it's been fluctuating, but we can't we can't even blame Frank. I mean, we see what has happened with the yeah, they told us that water cable, that, you know, right? So, so um, whoever that alligator is that went and ate the cable, <laughs> <laughs> or it is we don't like what you're doing to us. No, um, because we need technology. Mm -hmm. We need you know we need the the. the um, cables to work so that <laughs> I mean the telcos can now do their job and we on the other hand we can do you can see how everything is connected mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. um, so they, they, tell, they they they're saying that um, everything is now correct that uh, the problem has gone uh, I don't know I'm how, not sure that's, about that's that. why we, we were talking earlier you say on the one hand that the problems are solved and on the other hand you say it will take a week or two or three weeks you know we don't even know a total of five weeks because they said repairs should take about one to two weeks mm -hmm. and then having to test and make sure everything is going well that's another two to three weeks so are we going to be doing this for the next five weeks <laughs> I, I, hope not. Not. I hope not I hope not I hope, I hope not. not. I hope not. Yeah, but maybe this is a good way to just uh, draw the right. pattern for right. today. Right, mm -hmm. right. This is where we wrap it up. On the show today, it's been lovely having a breakfast with you. My name is Rome Paulson. We'll see you again tomorrow. And my name is Nyamgul Agaji. Have a wonderful day. Bye.